In this lecture, we introduce primary ideals. So an ideal Q in a ring R is primary if this Q is not equal to the ring and if A times B lies in Q, this implies either A lies in Q or some power of B, B to the N lies in Q. So where N is greater than zero and N is a natural number. Now if you take N equals to one here, you can see that every prime ideal is primary. So for n equals to 1, this q is just a prime ideal. Now we can rewrite this definition again. So we can define q is primary if and only if. So q is not equal to r would mean r modulo q is not 0. And every 0 divisor in r modulo q. So 0 divisor in r modulo q is precisely a times b which end up landing in q. So each zero divisor is nil potent in the sense that either A lies in Q or B to the N lies in Q because A and B are both zero divisors in this ring because A times B lands in Q. So every zero divisor is nil potent in the sense that you take some zero divisor like B raised to the power of N, it will lie in Q. So now we come to a uh, first result about primary ideals. So say we are given a primary ideal Q of some ring B and we are also given a ring homomorphism phi from A to B. So then we can contract this ideal Q which lies in B to A. So this is Q uh, and superscript C. So this is a contraction. So this is a primary ideal of A. So to see this you just modulo out this ideal out of A and then if you modulo out this ideal, this thing will inject into B modulo Q. So this thing just injects into B modulo Q. And every zero divisor in B modulo Q is nil potent precisely because Q is a primary ideal. So this property would carry over to A modulo um, this contraction of Q. So this property carries over here precisely because this is a subset of the string. Let us do some examples. So primary ideals of integers are 0 and power of some prime number. So P is a prime number. So this you can see easily say X and Y are integers. Their product lies in P to the N. Then some power of P divides either X or Y. So let P divide X. Then uh, x to the n will contain p to the n as a factor. So x to the n lies within uh, this ideal generated by p to the n. So now we uh, do a second example. Here we show that a primary ideal is not necessarily a power of a prime. So here for integers, we have necessarily that power of a prime number is a primary ideal. But this is not true for the general case. So we can see this uh, in this particular example. So say is a is this ring k x y where this is a polynomial ring in two indet indeterminates x and y and say q is an ideal generated by x comma y square so then q is uh, primary since the elements of a modulo q so a modulo q looks like this k x y modulo x y square so you get rid of x so you j are just left with k y over y square and then you can say elements here of, are of the form a y plus b where the small y is capital Y modulo our ideal Q. So elements of a modulo Q are of the form a y plus b so where a and b lie in this field k. So b lies in the field so it is not going to give you zero divisors so zero divisors are precisely going to come from the form a y but you square this it will lie in y square so this makes them nil potent. So zero divisors are of the form a y and these zero divisors are nil potent. So zero divisor is nil potent and that makes sure that this q is uh, primary ideal. So q is primary. Now you take radical of q. Radical of q means you get rid of this power. You just left with x y and this is a prime ideal which we denote by p. It is a prime ideal precisely because if you take this ring A modulo out with this prime ideal, you just get this K which is a field and therefore an integral domain which makes P a prime ideal. Now take P square. So this is X square, X, Y and Y square. And you can see this clearly lies within this ideal Q. 
because x square and xy are both generated by x and y square y square are the same so we have strict inclusions p square strictly lies within q because uh, you just have x square and xy here which can be both be generated by x and these two cannot generate x so there is a strict inclusion here and then q strictly lies within p because there is no y here and there is a y here so we have a primary ideal which is not necessarily a prime power it is lying between uh, two so now we see converse of this so say you have a prime ideal and you take some it's some power p to the n where n is a natural number which is greater than zero then this is not necessarily prime so now consider this ideal a which is x y minus z square and you consider this ring r which is k x y z then modulo a so that is uh, ring of polynomials in three indeterminates x y and z so now what does this ring r consists of so this r consists of polynomials in x so you just polynomials in x will be in this ring just polynomials in y will be in this ring so we cannot have polynomials in x y because they will be replaced by polynomials in uh, z square so you have uh, polynomials in x z or you have polynomials in y z or you have polynomials in just z so basically you don't have polynomials in x y you have everything else now you put the small x as capital x modulo a small y as capital y modulo a small z as capital z modulo a so now notice that this p the small x comma small z in r this is a prime ideal now precisely because uh, now if you take this ring r and you modulo out with, with x and z you will get rid of this polynomials in x you will get rid of polynomials in x z you will get rid of polynomials in y z because this is generated by z you will get rid of these polynomials only polynomials you are left with is polynomials in y so r modulo this is just k y and this is an integral domain so therefore we can say p is prime so what is p square square this you get x square x z and z square and now we will show that p square is not primary precisely because x y is equal to z square that is our uh, defining relationship so this lies within p square because z square lies within p square but x does not lie within p square as you can see x you cannot generate x in this ideal x does not lie within p square and y does not lie in radical of p square that is any power of y will not lie in p square because there is no y here y is not an element of this and uh, so y is not in radical of p square and since uh, this is uh, prime so this will be just p so we can see that this p square is not primary although p is prime so p is a prime ideal but p square is not primary so we have been able to construct an example of a prime ideal whose power which was p square is not necessarily primary so let us discuss some propositions so the first proposition we want to discuss is this so let q be a primary ideal in a ring r then radical of q is the smallest prime ideal which contains q so if you have you start with the primary ideal then you can take its radical and its radical will be the smallest prime ideal which contains q so to so see this we are going to use this fact so radical of 0 is intersection of all prime ideals in the ring so this pi lies in the ring r so this is the nil radical so nil radical is equal to intersection of all prime ideals of the ring now you consider this ring a modulo q so instead of r we are saying we are considering this ring a so in this ring a modulo q this radical of q will consist of all nil potents because any element here you raise it to some power it will end up lying in here q ideal q which will is the nil potent of the is the zero of the string so therefore radical of q consists of nil potents and uh, so since it consists of nil potents so radical of zero is nothing but nil potents so this radical of q becomes nil potents of this string so this radical of q lies in the intersection of all prime ideals of 
A modulo Q. So that lies in the intersection of all prime ideals. So in some sense, if it is a prime ideal, it will be the minimal prime ideal. So therefore, it is minimal, and the only thing left to show is that it is a prime ideal. So what we are saying is this radical of Q would lie in the intersection of all prime ideals of this ring, precisely because radical of Q is radical of zero of this ring A modulo Q. So let A B lie in the radical of Q. So we have to show that uh, this radical of Q is a prime ideal. So then some power of AB to the M where M is a uh, positive integer lies in Q. So but Q is a uh, primary. So therefore either A to the M lies in Q. So that is just so now we have AM here and BMN here. We're just copying this here. So AM BM. So either AM lies in Q or this p m times n lies in q for some n so thus either a lies in radical of q or b lies in radical of q so you start with a b lies in radical of q and we have reached the conclusion either a lies in radical of q or b lies in radical of q therefore radical of q is a prime ideal and by this theorem or this fact here this radical of zero is precisely radical of q and these prime ideals p i lie in uh, a modulo Q and this radical of zero is radical of Q and this is the minimal prime ideal because it lies in the intersection of all prime ideals so we have done this so now some terminology so let P be a prime ideal and Q a primary ideal such that P is equal to radical of Q then Q is said to be P primary so now we prove a uh, proposition two. here we say so let m be a maximal ideal of some ring r and a satisfies either of the following two conditions then it is a is m primary so radical of a is m where m is the maximal ideal of a ring r then a is m primary or this some power of the maximal ideal lies within a which in turn lies within m for some this n is a positive integer then a is m primary so a being m primary means that you can write uh, this m as radical of a where a is uh, becomes primary by these conditions so this is condition for saying that a is m primary but we have to show that a is primary so 2 says that is powers of a maximal ideal R M primary. So first assume that 1 is true and then we will show that 2 holds. So uh, if radical of A is M then say A is a primary ideal and therefore this ensures by this definition that P is a prime ideal and Q a primary ideal. If P is radical of Q then Q is said to be P primary. So we are replacing P with M and Q with A. So M is radical of A and we have uh, so m is maximal then therefore it is prime so we have to show that this a now is a primary ideal so this we will show in one so assuming one holds we will show that two holds so you copy this thing right here and now you start taking radicals so radical of m to the n is just radical of m because radical destroys these powers so this is just by the property of radicals so property of radicals and these radicals also preserve this inclusion so you start taking radicals so radical of this will lie in radical of a right here and then you have further this lies in radical of m now you have this equality here so it has to be the case that radical of a is equal to m because uh, this radical of m is just m because m is maximal and therefore prime and radical of a prime ideal is prime so radical of m is m so radical of a is equal to radical of m by this equation here which is equal to m so radical of a is equal to m which is condition one and therefore if we assume one is true we can say a is a primary and rad of a is equal to m would say that a is m primary so let us now prove one so we are given in one that radical of a is m so to start for any uh, primary ideals we start with our given ring r and modulo out a 
So what are the zero divisors in R modulo A? So zero divisors are precisely those you multiply them and they will uh, land up in A. So A B lies in Q implies either A is in Q or B to the N is in Q. So we are saying radical of A is M. So this radical of A actually contains all the zero divisors because you raise it to some power, they will end up lying in Q. Instead of Q, we are saying A. So raise your zero divisor to some power, they will become nil potent in this ring. But this radical of A is M. So zero divisors lie precisely in M modulo A. So zero divisors actually lie precisely in radical of A because you raise it to some power, they lie in A, which is zero here. So um, they lie in M modulo A, but this M is a maximal ideal. So thus the nil radical just equals M modulo A because we know that nil radical, which we write as radical of zero is intersection of all prime ideals of the ring. So this would include this M, but M is itself a maximal ideal. So it is not going to lie in any intersection or anything. It is just going to be itself M because it's a maximal ideal. So the nil radicals equal to this M modulo A. So thus R modulo A has a single maximal and maximal ideals are prime. So single maximal and a prime ideal. So therefore we can use a non-unit criterion. So non-unit criterion for maximal ideals is that if you are a unit, you lie outside the maximal ideal. If you're a non-unit, you lie within the maximal ideal. So the units of R modulo A lie outside the maximal ideal and the non-units and the non-units are precisely the nil potents because M is equal to radical of A. You take any element X in M, raise it to some power. It will lie in A, which is the zero of uh, this ring R modulo A. So non-units lie within M. So thus every zero divisor of R modulo A is nil potent because every zero di divisor lies within M and elements within M are nil potent. So which implies A is primary by this definition. Every zero divisor in R modulo A is nil potent because the zero divisors in R modulo A lie in the maximal ideal M. And that is it. That's what we wanted to show that A is primary. So we wanted to show A is primary and therefore now uh, a becomes M primary by this definition. So M is a maximal and therefore prime ideal A. We have just shown it as a primary ideal. Now M is equal to radical of A, then A is said to be M primary.